Mm -hmm, baby, we got some wheels. Hey everybody, welcome back to Jeff and Adam build a Zenith. We're still building the Zenith, the experimental airplane here. And uh, in this video, what I want to do is go over the landing gear because as you may see behind me, it's got it's got its feet on. We put its legs on. So we're able to move it around, kind of switch things around in the garage, which is good. And uh, like usual, like with just basically everything, um, it, it seemed like a simple process to get the landing gear on, but there were there were definitely a few little things that made it difficult that you wouldn't maybe think about that we didn't think about at first. So in this video, I'm going to be focusing on the landing gear, and I'm going to try and uh, mention all of the key points that you might want to know if you're working on your landing gear. I'm going to try and put as much B-roll and stuff of actually doing things on the plane as I can in here, but I did not film every single thing that I did because there just was not enough time, you know, because that's, that's the thing. It's really hard to balance between, you know, filming something or actually getting stuff done. And so I, I pretty much always want to err on the side of getting the thing done. Um, instead of like trying to film as I do it because it's just kind of distracting and it's it's hard to do well both so I got to pick one and kind of focus more on that anyway enjoy the same disclaimer applies just because we do it doesn't mean you should and your uh, parts and stuff may be slightly different from ours I don't know but hopefully this will give you an idea of what to do or not do all right let's get started so let's start with the nose strut so the nose strut this guy right here, uh, that is, this is actually, we have the new nose strut kit on there. So the, the new uh, shock kit, which is basically just uh, metal discs and rubber donuts stacked on top of each other to provide shock absorption. So we're not using these, the, uh, the older uh, bungee style uh, thing. So um, this is good because it's nice that we don't have to do the whole bungee thing. And I think this is going to be a lot more uh, durable and, and just have a longer lifespan and, and all that sort of thing. Plus it looks way cooler. Uh, but the very important thing to know about that is that you will need to cut the, the, uh, your strut. There's, there's, a uh, um, the hook, the little, like the little things that stick out for the bungee to, uh, bungee, uh, the bungee to hook onto, you're going to need to cut those off and then you're going to end up with a hole in your strut and you're going to need to weld that hole. So, we didn't know this, um, so we, we cut it off just fine. That was the easy part. Um, but because we, we had asked Zenith about this like last year or something like the open house thing. And they were like, yeah, you just, you know, you just kind of just chop off those parts and then you can put them on. And we're like, okay, cool. But we didn't know that we had to weld it. And uh, we're not experienced welders. And so we didn't, you know, we didn't want to do that and, and, and take that time and then you know not be totally sure of how good our work was so what we ended up doing was sending the strut to zenith to have them weld it so they welded the strut and it looks it looks all great the next tricky thing was that it was the discs actually the for the new strut shock shock strut strut shock shock kit uh for the for the nose strut the discs were actually out of round so um, or it's not or they weren't totally round so they didn't really fit on the strut and so that was that was a pain um, I, I I probably could have had Zenith send us new ones but I was just like well we got them we'll just we'll just uh, you know file them down and make them fit so that's what we ended up doing it worked out okay dad did a great job of uh, making sure that those fit so that worked out but it did take extra time and it was kind of frustrating because it's like we get this new kit and it doesn't work. So we told them about that. So I think that probably the kits coming out now are going to be just fine, hopefully. Along with the, uh, the, the rubber discs and all that stuff for the actual shock part, there's a reinforcement assembly part that you kind of have to put together and build, which is actually a little bit tricky because of the way that the rivets are, trying to get enough space for, uh, for your rivet gun and everything to kind of go together so we got those tasty little donuts right there we got this piece which is this this reinforcement piece here long story short if you read carefully it comes with a bunch of bolts also if you look it comes with bolts and the bolts go on here so along all of these holes right here and you have one little l that goes up in the front and one little l that goes down in the back okay 
and for some reason it like points to a random hole right there and then like a random hole over there um well it's not uh well yeah it is it's, yeah it is actually they don't actually show you but what i basically get from this is that this front l needs to be at the right height so basically like there's a gap between the bottom part of the L, but and, and like so that, yeah, there's a gap there. But the L, the top of the L is actually above that metal lip piece. It probably doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but basically, if you go over here and you put this thing, see, I've made those red marks because I thought that that those are the ones we need to get rid of those rivets, but we don't. We need to get rid of these rivets right here. So one, two, three, four rows to match up with these four holes on the rows right there. So then, cause then what you do, well I can't do this with one hand, but basically once the L is, is on here and upward, it's going to line up, it's gonna be forward of this. So basically, we're going to drill all of these holes, for some reason these four holes are 3 16 we're gonna drill all of these holes out to 3 16 and then, we're going to remove these rivets, these these four uh, these four rows, one row from the top. Drill those out to three sixteenths, and then that should be fine. And then th that way there should be room for these um, nuts and the and the bolts there. And then and then we shouldn't have to mess with these rivets either because it should be basically the ba the ba back L, the aft L should be below those three rivets right there. So that's basically what hap what is happening. That's I think that's what we're gonna do. And I think that's what we're supposed to do. So unless we're wrong, in which case, I guess we'll do something different. But that seems to make sense. He said, "Wow." The confusion was coming from the fact that I did not notice that it says bolts right there, and and, and that these these are all A5 holes. And I so I thought, okay, well we'll just rivet the A5 A5 holes to the A5 just to the A5 holes that are already on the firewall. But no, and now that I think about it, I think these two plates would be too thick anyway. Um, so what we're gonna do, practically speaking, what we're gonna do the next step would be to remove these stickers and then draw a uh, center line on, well, I believe these L's are exactly identical. Draw a center line on the L and then match up the L, get it centered on here and then make the marks to get the uh the marks for where we want to like i'll cl clamp it in place or something decide where i want the rivets on the l and then rivet that in place boom on this side boom wait it goes like that right yeah it goes down like that yes yeah like that boom and then rivet those in place and then um and also either before or after or whatever drill all of these holes out to 3 16 cent inch drill these rivets out one two three four rows and then um, drill those out to three sixteenths inch and then do a test fit with the uh, bolts and stuff and then I think we'll just leave everything else in place so that, that's, that should be how that works and then that should actually be it the next tricky thing still on the nose strut is the plastic bearing like the the bearing for the strut and I'm not sure why, but this part costs like $150 um, because we had to buy another one because I screwed up the first one. Um, but I didn't realize that until after we bought it. But anyway, the reason why I screwed it up was because um, you need to tap uh, the, the holes. You need to drill holes for the quarter inch bolts that go on the bottom. And then you need to, um, and yeah, so you need, to ha you need to make threading into the plastic part than the plastic bearing for them to thread into. And it's very difficult to get them all lined up and threaded in the right way. And for some reason, there it's, it's fine, it's fine coarse or fine, fine threaded, not coarse threaded. Um, and yeah, so it was really frustrating and a big pain. So, I mean, I was almost just gonna, just gonna use like, you know, self tapping, like uh, screw, um, yeah, pretty much like screws. Like if you use like self-tapping bolts or bolts or th bolt screw, screw bolt things, I don't really know what they're called. But if you use like some sort of coarse thread self-tapping uh, screws that have like a bolt head on them that you could, you know, drill a hole through 
um, to safety wire them all together like you like you need to do, then I just I would have just done that. Like it seems kind of weird that you would need to to make such fine fine threads for those pieces. So anyway, getting all all four bolt holes to line up was difficult, and so I messed up on the first one, uh, and then I barely got the second one to work. But it does work. The other thing was the, actually the um, the other thing about the bearing was actually the the holes. Uh, going through it uh, you know, horizontally. Um, I probably should have done it the way that John did it in the video, the John from Home Built Help, um, but I kind of did it like a different way and it didn't work out so great. So probably do it like that where you make a template and you like match it up and stuff, which I still think it seems a little ridiculous. Like there's got to be a better way of attaching this this bearing instead of like all this stuff going on. But anyway, just watch out for that. And also, the other thing was that uh, it didn't fit super great, the, at least the first one that, that we got. So I had to like kind of cut away some on here. And it seems like it is better to just use a razor blade to cut little portions um, as opposed to like a sander because I tried a sander and it did, did not work super great. But between that, I was able to um, kind of fit it in and it is a tight fit. Oh yeah, also right here, right here I had to drill out because it was hitting a rivet. Why was it hitting a rivet? Oh, well, it's all covered up right now, so. And I think, and I, honestly, I can't remember if I have it, if I have the same little hole right here, this little indentation um, on the new one, but I drilled this out partially because there was a rivet that it was sitting on and it was making it not, you know, it wasn't sitting flush against the firewall. So I'm not sure why it was just on this one side but that's what I had to do. So I don't know, you might, you might have to do the same thing, but I don't know, that's just me. What am I, uh, aerospace engineer? I think not. So the fork assembly, well, you have the fork assembly and then you have the, you know, attaching the fork assembly to the main strut. So the fork assembly, that wasn't too tricky. Um, I'm trying to remember, it was mainly just, you know, stacking the things up and uh, stacking the, the, the reinforcement strut and the, and the other strut, like the doubler. Um, and then getting those holes to, you know, match drilling everything. And then also uh, drilling out using, like, I used a step drill to drill out the big uh, axle holes, um, the, the holes for the wheel axle. Now, as far as actually attaching the strut to, the nose strut to the fork, that was um, pretty tricky actually, cause you, cause there's like six holes that you need to drill out and you gotta match drill all those holes and you gotta, you know, drill it out through that thick uh, you know, two pieces of thick aluminum and then the steel of the actual strut. So that was, that was kind of tricky. Uh, dad came up with this like kind of jig setup using the drill press to actually drill it out, which worked pretty well. Um, so it was kind of like a lot to, you know, set up and have to do, but, but it turned out to, to work pretty well. And then of course, you know, you got to drill your pilot holes and then step your way up. And it's a pretty slow process because of how thick the materials are. Yeah. Also, on one of those bolt holes, um, well, you have to keep the bolt holes um, far enough away from the weld, so that way the the bolt head is not resting on the weld uh, on the on the nose strut. So what I had to do on one of them was make like a little custom washer. Basically, I just ground down like half of a washer or almost half of it, um, so that I could elevate the bolt head just above the weld to keep it from touching. So. Uh, keep that in mind because it wasn't a big deal, but it did take extra time to have to have to fabricate that part and install it. And then uh, let's see, I need a safety wire, a couple of those um, those bolts there for the for the uh, nose strut bearing. And then I guess as far as the the axle, the nose axle, I I guess we're going to drill holes for like a cotter pin to keep the uh, to keep the nuts from rotating because that is a part subject to rotation. So, I mean, I know they're tight together, but I'd feel better having a cotter pin or some or safety wire or something in there. So I think that's what we'll do.